We're back out in the garden here today, guys, and we need to get all of our potatoes out of the ground. We got to get these guys dug up. And last year, we messed up. And I have some tips this year I want to share with you guys so you don't have the same problems that we had last year. But first, we need to start digging these potatoes. So let's get digging. A couple things you guys are going to want to use to dig your potatoes is a potato fork. This is not a potato fork. <laughs> I don't have a potato fork, but I do have a shovel. So I'm going to use this shovel right here, and we're going to start digging. You just have to be careful not to get right into the hill where the potatoes are. Kind of stay back a little bit, and you're going to have to use your hands a lot. Another tip I have for you guys, your fingernails. Guys, trim your fingernails because you are going to get down and dirty with these potatoes in here, and they're going to get mud and gunk and all sorts of stuff up underneath your fingernails. Make sure those are nice and trimmed. Another thing you're going to need is a nice pair of shoes that doesn't have any holes in them obviously these are not my nicest pair of shoes these are my play shoes my garden shoes and if i wear my nice shoes out here can it's going to give me a hard time so we have to make sure we have our garden shoes on when we're out in the garden digging potatoes lastly before you guys get started digging your potatoes is you're going to want something to kneel on unless you got a bunch of garden pants that have stains and holes in them but i have one of these little pieces of foam and i can just kneel on that and go right down the row let's get digging See, that's our seed potato right there. And this is a good potato. What we're gonna do is just set these out on the ground right here. Whoa. You can kind of find where the plant is here and then dig right around it. You want to stay back just a little bit from your plant. So when you're digging your potatoes, just dig them out of the ground, right out of the mound. And just set them on the dirt out here. We're going to let them set here for a little bit. I'll explain why we do this in just a second. Oh, that's a nice tea. I love these little ones like, whoa. <laughs> I love these little ones like this because that's perfect size for pot roast. Nice tater. Whew. That's it, that's our row of potatoes right now. I got them all laid out on the side of the bed. See what I'm talking about by getting hands a little dirty? <laughs> I'm gonna go clean up real quick and we're gonna come back and uh, talk about what's going on with this row because by the time I got about a quarter of the way down it, something really interesting happened. Let's go wash our hands. All right, we did really good through this whole quarter of the section of the potato row. Uh, everything looks really good. Nice big looking tomato up. Wow. Nice big potatoes. They all look really good. And then I got about halfway down and this is what happened. Look guys, look at all these potatoes. Look at all of them. They're all half eaten. So I took one and I washed it just to kind of show you See that? That's what all these potatoes look like. So most of this row right here, probably 50% or more look like this. That's very unfortunate because I was actually out here about a week ago and I dug up a hill. And these are the ones I dug up right here. They're a little bit, uh, I had them setting out so they, they're a little bit more hardened off, but they were all really nice and huge. I'm like, all right, we're going to have a really good potato year. 
and I got digging and this is what I found. So it's unfortunate for sure, but we are still going to preserve what we have here. And I am gonna show you the way that we messed up last year. So right now what we're going to do so I'm going to leave these guys set out for now until I get ready to process. Um, I'm going to take you guys along when I start processing these and storing these and preserving them. We're going to do them in a couple different ways. I know I mentioned before this year about having some real intensive mole problems. And I never thought that they would get to our potato bed like this. I have had uh, a mole get in and eat a potato or two here and there in years past. Nothing to this magnitude. So... This is very unfortunate. We had a, a huge problem in here, more so than I would have ever imagined. But uh, we're going to definitely get some preventative tips here to stop our, our mole problem. I'm going to start researching, do what I can. I don't want to put a bunch of chemicals in the ground. I hate putting traps out if I have to, but there has got to be a good way to get rid of these moles in this garden. So if you guys have any tips and tricks that uh, can eradicate about 4,000 moles out here, uh, leave them down in the comments below because I would love to hear all your guys' opinions on how you guys get rid of your moles in your garden. Let's get going. We're going we're gonna to start preserving these here real quick, okay? And we're going to take you along. I'm going to show you what we did last year and how we're going to fix it this year. So I went through all of our potatoes out in the garden, and this is the batch that uh, all the moles got to. And there's quite a bit there. I'd say there's probably, I don't know, three, four pounds of potatoes there. And that's a big loss for us. We didn't really want to lose any potatoes this year. Um, but this is what happens. I'm not going to let them go to waste. The chickens don't really eat them, but we'll compost them and turn this into great soil for next year's garden. So the first thing you got to do is peel all these bad guys right here. So we've got a couple buckets right here. It's a cool-ish morning. We've got hoodies on. It's not supposed to get super warm out today. So, And we've only got the one canner. So we're going to start processing these. And all we're doing this year is we're going to peel our potatoes. We're going to quarter them up, put them in our jars, and can them. We don't want to have a potato loss like we did last year where we kept too many out for fresh eating and then end up losing a bunch. So this year we're going to can most of these. I am going to save a few of these just for dinners for uh, the next few nights for us and to enjoy and eat. But otherwise, we're going to can these up. Cat versus chicken. That was. Yeah. These are really green yet. Uh, I don't know. Oh, these are, but these are also, um, the golds, I think, and yeah. they are, they're not white, white. Right. You guys, get back. Chickens are curious. So last year we went to use some of our canned potatoes and I got thinking about it and I tried to take a cheap, easy, quick way out and it didn't work out for me. Um, when I canned my potatoes, I didn't peel them and somebody told me that you're not supposed to can potatoes with the peels on them. I got looking into it and that was correct. So my biggest blunder <laughs> was that I was trying to save time, not peel the potatoes, can them quick, and it backfired on me. So I did see some people that said that you can eat your potatoes if the peel's on them. There was a lot of other people that said not to, so I erred on the side of caution and decided not to eat those potatoes. So I ended up losing about 10 quarts of canned potatoes, and that's my biggest tip is 
don't try to take the easy way out and cut corners. When you're canning things, you, you want to go by the book. You want to do what the ball books say, the ball blue book. Um, they all say to peel your potatoes. So right now, Candace is peeling potatoes. I'm going to start cutting our potatoes into quarters, putting them in jars so I can get a batch going on the canner. With only having one canner, this is going to take a little bit of time. So we'll go through that whole process. I want to take you guys right from the dirt, right to the table, right to the jar, right to the canner, the whole process here. So we're going to start jarring these potatoes up right now. All right, guys, we got our canner going. I've got three quarts of water in there, just like we do with all of our other pressure canning videos you can check out. And I give it a little shot of lemon juice, so it'll basically make it so it doesn't blacken the bottom of your pressure canner. We also have our potatoes here. We're boiling water in there. Leave some head space. And we're gonna, you wanna wipe your rims as well. Basically the same process we do on all of our pressure canning. It's the same thing. I'll link a couple videos up here. Uh, you guys can get some uh, few other tips and tricks that we've done in the past year. So we're just going to load this canner up and get processing. Try not to bang every can. All right, so our pressure canner, we can fit seven quarts in there at a time. We are going to put our lid on and wait for the steam to come out the vent. All right, we got our lid on here. And we're going to wait for the steam to come out this vent. Once it starts venting steam, let it vent for 10 minutes and then put our 10-pound weight on. For pint jars, you want to process for 35 minutes. For quart jars, you want to process for 40 minutes. So we're going to let this thing heat up. Once it gets venting, we're going to wait our 10 minutes. Then we're going to put our 10-pound weight on, and then we're going to wait for it to start jiggling. Once it starts jiggling, then you start your time for your 40-minute process time for the quart jars that we're doing today. All right, we have been venting for 10 minutes. So we have our 10 pound weight here and I have my gloves on because that steam is hot. So we're gonna put our 10 pound weight on, wait for this to start jiggling, and then we're gonna set our timer for 40 minutes. We've let our potatoes process for 40 minutes. We shut the gas off. Our uh, safety stop here and our handle has went down. So it's depressurized, we can take the weight off open up the lid, pull these guys out, and get the next batch going. Ooh, steamy. These look good, Candace. We're gonna get these jars out. 
We're going to go set them in the house. We're going to let them cool. And we're not going to touch them. We're not going to push on the tops and see if they sealed. We're not doing anything to these guys. We're going to let them set for 24 hours. All right, guys, that's how we do our potatoes here at Gandhi Farms. I hope you learned something. I hope I could at least give you guys a little bit of insight as to what not to do with your potatoes so you don't lose your potato harvest like we did last year. But I think this year we're going to do good, and we're going to enjoy these guys all winter long. Thanks again, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.